Hey guys, and welcome to a quick episode on multi-tenancy. Now, I was getting into making a video on Kubeflow multi-tenancy, and then I really thought it would be prudent to first release a video discussing multi-tenancy at kind of a high level. So when I refer to multi-tenancy, multi-tenancy I think has kind of changed in the age of microservices. And so I think it's kind of important to rehash what multi-tenancy even means. And really, the, the reason I think this is important is multi-tenancy and its requirements change drastically when looking at the different types of multi-tenancy, and some are much harder to make than other forms of multi-tenancy. So if that sounds interesting, if you'd like to explore this subject with me a little bit more, please stick around, watch this episode, and feel free to leave comments down below and continue this discussion on Discord. A good software engineer or DevOps engineer is going to define their problem well. And when you're talking about multi-tenancy, there's a lot of things to define. How I classify, I, I classify multi-tenancy into three categories. So the first is classical multi-tenancy, what everybody referred to as multi-tenancy five years ago. The second is internal multi-tenancy, and the third is external multi-tenancy. Now, I really am not going to delve too much into classical, but in each one of these broad categories, there are subcategories as you can break it down uh, a little bit differently. Let's talk about classical multi-tenancy first. Classical multi-tenancy is where you have multiple tenants on the same server. So think of a monolith. And for this, we're going to think of a bank banking app. We all log into the same monolith server. That server serves all of us the same, uh, but it keeps our data private and secure. So you can't access my funds, I can't access your funds. This would be classical multi-tenancy and it could be solved with a single database and a single server. Now, as we found out, that doesn't scale very well having a monolith, but that's beyond the point. Now, the second, form inside of classical multi-tenancy is where you'd have your single monolithic app and then you'd have uh, separate databases for each client. This is a way to get around where, you know, uh, some businesses say, I don't want my data stored in the same database and, uh, or maybe even on the same hard drive. And this would break that out. So you still all use the same monolith, but then each client's data is stored separately. Okay, so now we've gotten over the classical and then single tenancy would be where each, each client, each consumer of your application got their own backend server with their own database. And that would be single tenancy. So basically everything we create these days is multi-tenant. Just from the classical sense, everything is multi-tenant. Now, that being said, deploying something in a real multi-tenant way is very difficult. So I'm going to bring you into the two modern, so external and internal multi-tenancy. And we can kind of forget about classical multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy. The external would think of somebody like a SaaS or, uh, for example, AWS. In this type of multi-tenancy, you're looking at companies and corporations as your tenants. And more importantly, if you visualize this as an office complex, in the office, uh, each of your tenants are actually companies with tenants themselves. So in an office space, company A wants their own space se segregated off from all the other ones, so only their employees can get there. They might want their own power. They might want their own internet feed. They want their own things dedicated to their company and their employees. Now, inside of company A, you have the internal multi-tenancy. The bathroom is a shared bathroom. The electricity is shared among all employees. And this it would be the internal multi-tenancy. So if you provide a service inside of your company, 
This is internal multi-tenancy. If you provide a service outside of your company for other companies, this would be external multi-tenancy. This is kind of how I see multi-tenancy in general, whether you're providing it internally or externally. And this helps lay a lot of groundwork because when we're talking about Kubeflow, if you were to provide Kubeflow as a service, the problems and the challenges become much different than just providing Kubeflow to multiple teams inside of your company. So in my next videos uh, about Kubeflow, they're all gonna be, I have a several about multi-tenancy, and they're all going to be related to internal multi-tenancy. So we're going to be providing Kubeflow to separate teams inside of my company. And this is going to be the internal multi-tenancy that we're talking about. If you wanted to provide Kubeflow as a service, now you have reached an entirely new scale and new challenges. Not only are a lot of corporations going to want their their Kubeflow running on their own servers with dedicated resources, but they're also going to want a way that their employees can log into their Kubeflow. So Kubeflow has a way to allow employees to log in and handle that, but it doesn't have a way to separate that on company. And in fact, most companies probably want their own Kubeflow instance. And then we have the databases that back Kubeflow and where we store those and how we store those and keep companies separate. And then we have ingress and egress and how you're going to keep that all separate. And this, these are the problems that you must solve if you're talking about an external multi-tenant. But if you're still talking about internal multi-tenancy, you don't really have to worry about those. Dex is going to provide you authentication for all of your team members, and then Kubeflow can keep those teams separated itself. It already has those things built in, and I'll be showing you guys those in a few days. This is multi-tenancy, and this is what I consider the new age. I know if you look up multi-tenancy, they're going to disagree with me, um, but I wanted to post this anyways because really this question comes up time and time again, and for the most part, I believe that most of the information out there is mostly outdated. What, what does it mean? What does a company want when they want multi-tenancy? I believe most companies are looking at internal multi-tenancy, providing it for a team unless if you're a SaaS provider and then you know that you're an external multi-tenant. There's a gray area, so I support Kubernetes products. Um, so when people bring it up within the Kubernetes realm, it's actually unknown. Are you trying to provide Kubernetes as a service or are you trying to provide Kubernetes to your team? And so this is why probably for me, it's a little more confusing than a lot of people because uh, people aren't then clear on whether they're talking about a, a SaaS solution or external multi-tenancy versus internal multi-tenancy. And again, they're just vastly different problems. And I think that separating them there is good enough. If you're talking about internal multi-tenancy, now you can dig into that problem, but you can also uh, avoid digging into uh, the vast other problems. If you're talking about external multi-tenancy, you need to start there. And really the internal multi-tenancy problems aren't even your problems. That's the problem of Kubeflow. You have to worry about everything else. And the people using your solution, your SaaS solution, will use Kubeflow's built-in native multi-tenancy for their teams. All right, so that was as fast as I could, multi-tenancy, just a quick discussion. I hope that you liked it. I hope that you found it useful. Um, and if you like these quick discussions, let me know in the comments below if you wanna keep this discussion going about your multi-tenancy needs and maybe how I missed a scenario. Uh, join the Discord server and start a conversation on it. I would love to have further conversations with more people. That's how I learn is by talking to other people who have experiences different than mine. All right, that's it for me today. Thank you, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in a few days for Kubeflow Multi-Tenancy Part 1 Users. Kubeflow allows you to have employees log in, but it doesn't allow you to separate, separate them based 